So you're going to hear some, no we're going to talk about channels and concurrency, and you're going to hear some noise in the background. And uh, here's the code we're going to talk about in a second. So I had a, stu a question from a student on Greater Commons. And here's the question. But that noise you're hearing in the background is because, check out this view. <laughs> totally amazing. Wow, I don't know if you can see that. I know it's a totally small screen, you know, but uh, anyhow, right? People going out and surfing and sweet. So on a little bit of vacation with my family in Hawaii. So here's the question, right? How do we know that we're going to receive all the values? And concurrency is a total uh, mind warp. And what you have to do is quit thinking for me, the big thing, at least, that really helped me with concurrency is to stop thinking like single process, single thread, sequential, one after another, and actually start thinking concurrently like, oh, things are happening. I know that's like, it, it's, still, it's still a mind warp. Let's go through it, and then I'll talk about kind of how I see it afterwards. So we're going to make a channel of, that takes a value of type int. And again, just notice the language we use to talk about the language. We're take, making a channel that takes a value of type int, and that's going to be q. And then we're passing in that channel to this function gen, right? And gen's going to return something, and we'll assign it to c. Well, if we go and we look at gen, gen takes in a channel of type int, right? That is only going to be receive only channel. So we're putting things on, right? So receive only. I'm just making sure I'm using the right word there whatever it you could put values onto the channel you can't take values off right so we're just specifying here you can put values on and notice that when we made our channel of int it you could this channel int right here q you could put values on or you could take values off and here you could only put values on to this channel and so that's just like one of the things you could do is you could take something that is broader and you can make it more narrow and, uh, and so we did that with this function just to be specific about what is happening with this channel here. And we started out with Q, which can both, uh, you can put a value onto the channel or take a value off. So here, and then here we're just saying we are only putting values onto this channel. Boom, that's what we're doing. And we're, we're that's gonna be a value, you know, assigned to the variable Q. Here, unrelated to that, different scopes, but the same, just so you can see they're all connected. Then inside here, we're making another channel of int that takes a value of type int and uh, signing that to C. Bam! Launch a go function. This is anonymous self-executing function. It's anonymous because there's no name. Here, this function, functgen, has a name. This function has no name, right? And it's not taking in any parameters, any arguments, and it's uh, anonymous self-executing because right there it's going to execute. And we put go in front of it, and then this entire thing is like running in its own channel, just <clears throat> off there, <clears throat> off running. That's the way I like to think about it. Like, and so that's off and running. So sequence sequentially, our code's going to keep running, right? Like this is out of the way. That's running. We come back here. We return C. C is going to be a channel which it, it it holds a value of type and you could you could but we're only taking off of this one it's only going to take off value right you can only take a value off this channel so you can see here we're putting values on here we're taking values off and so we we just go through all of that that's done so going sequentially right we did this and then we came down here and we ginned and we did that and we returned this and then we go to receive and here in receive we got c and q so what's going to happen down here in receive? We pass in C and Q. Q is that chan of int, and they both are taking values off of the chan of int, right? And so Q, 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 Q is this Q from up there. And what we're looking for in that Q is, I'm just checking this out for a second. Here we're putting on a value of 1. So we're putting a value of 1 there. We pass that in. And that's our Q right here. And then here we're putting onto that channel this value one. And that's kind of like our flag to quit. So when we get down there, our flag will quit. I just got told dinner's ready. So we come down here and we've got Q, which is going to be like our flag. 
And so like taking a value off of that, right? If that's the case, if there's a value, we're just gonna return and we're gonna exit out of all of this. And, uh, and then we're gonna go down here and print about to exit. Otherwise, when we hit the select, right? We're just internally gonna loop over the select and pull things off of a channel, whatever channel is ready. When we hit that select, we'll be pulling off of here. And so both of these, right? Q, which is this one, which we pass in here and which here we're, we're waiting to put something onto it right there, right? And so this is where we put something onto that. We're putting something onto it. And then down here, when we put something onto it, we're gonna return and we'll be all done. And we hit that after we've done all of this. So that's out there running in its own process. And it's gonna be bam, 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 putting values onto the channel. <laughs> and, uh, and so here, right? We passed in that C right there, and then C here, we're pulling values off, and then we're gonna print that value out. And so the question is, is how do we know, how do we know that, you know, if these are running in parallel, and so excellent question, you know, and there, let's say there's like, you know, how do we know that this is going to happen, right? Here, like we might not just get to 98, and then because maybe this takes a little bit of time and how do we know it's actually gonna to get to there? So when you put a value onto a channel, this is how you know, when you put a value onto a channel, then that value, if it's an unbuffered channel, right, is gonna block the channel, it blocks. And so you can't, that's where your code synchronizes. You put something on and, and nothing else can be put on that channel until that value is taken off. And when that value is taken off, now something else can be put on. And so, right, that's how you do it, right? Where we take that value off, and now another value can be put on. We take that value off, and now another value can be put on. We take that value off, and now another value can be put on all the way up to 99. We take off 99, and now another value can be put on. 100 gets put on. Right, 100 is put on, or not, sorry, 98, and then 99 is put on, and then we come down here and we put on one. And so we have those two things. We put on 99, and then we come up here, and then we, we put on one. And this right here is sequential. This is sequential, so it puts this one on, and then it puts this one on. And so that one got put on its own channel, and then you know, a fraction of a nanosecond later, that other one got put on. So maybe potentially like you might lose that last value. I don't have an absolute answer for that, but in my mind, this one gets put on, it gets taken off, and then you leave this, and then this one gets put on, I'll be right there, right? And then it gets taken off and you leave that. And that's what happens when you run it. You go up all the way through 99 and then you exit. I don't know, I hope that's, a, that's, that's my understanding, my explanation, it's not 100% perfect but that's kind of how I see it. I hope it helps. If somebody else has a better explanation, Bill Kennedy, Bill Kennedy, Bill Kennedy, <laughs> please make a video and then post your link to your video down beneath this video. I'd love to hear it. Hope you're all having a great day. Uh, please hit like and subscribe. That helps other people find these videos in this channel, helps support my work as a teacher. And then also check out Greater Commons because I'm trying to build this to help support my family and, uh, and to teach in this larger way. And if you're interested in teaching on Greater Commons, get in touch with me because I'd love to help you get your courses out to the world. I can help you with that. All right, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. Have a great day.